everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, class. Right. Uh, today we are going to have our tutorial session. All right. We're going to have our tutorial session. Uh, before that, uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Okay, uh, class, so I just want to check, can you see my screen and uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so let me just take your attendance first. Uh, I'll just call out your names. Um, Hing Dong, Hu Hing Dong, are you here? Hu Hing Dong, Hu Hing Dong, are you here? Uh, Lu Jui Min? Okay. Uh, Lu Jimin, are you here? Eng Han Xiang, Eng Wei Hong, Eng Wei Hong, okay, Ong Mei Lin, Ong Mei Lin, uh, Peng Xue Wen, Peng Xue Wen, Hua Yi Hang, Hua Yi Hang, Zhou Yan Cheng, all right, uh, Tan Xin Shen, Tio Liang Hu, uh, Tio Yi Si, okay, Wong Chong Yi, Wong Chong Yi, uh, Wong Ka Xing, all right, good afternoon, Wong Ka Xing. All right, uh, Yong Wing Liang, uh, Yong Chie, Yong Chie, okay, uh, Lu Jui Min, are you here? Lu Jui Min, are you here? Uh, Peng Shui Wen, Lu Jui Min and Peng Shui Wen. Uh, let's see. Um, sir. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir. Ah, yes, yes. Ah, uh, uh, Lu Jui Min, he go vaccine. Uh, sorry, uh, Lu Jamin. Uh -huh. He go vaccine. Oh, uh, how about Peng Shui Wen? Uh, for that I no idea. Okay. Uh, uh, never mind. Maybe they are, they are a bit late. I'll, I'll check again your attendance shortly lah. Huh? Okay. All right, Lu Jamin going vaccine. So, all right. Uh. Okay, Peng Shui Wen, don't know. Eh? All right, okay. Now, uh, today we have our tutorial three. So in our previous tutorial session uh, on week five, our previous tutorial session on week five, uh, we went through a tutorial two, software development. So today we're going to look at tutorial three, which is on hardware, all right? Our previous tutorial was on software. So now our tutorial is on hardware. And the topics are CPU, assembly language programming, and uh, interrupts, okay? So uh, if you look at tutorial three, uh, the questions here are uh, theory questions. The questions here, uh, they are all uh, theory questions, meaning to say, uh, for example, uh, if you look at um, question one, right? If you look at question one, so question one is asking, uh, Describe the function of each of the following registers. So what is the program status register, PSRs, what is that? So, okay, uh, the program status register is, uh, is called XPSR, all right? Which is a combination of three PSRs. So uh, the combination of three PSRs are, the first one is APSR, 
So when you write your answer, you can just write in a point form like this. You can just write in point form. APSR, EPSR, and IPSR. Okay. So the APSR is uh, application PSR. The EPSR is execution uh, X, uh, execution PSR. And the IPSR is uh, interrupt PSR. Okay. So your program status register right, is a combination of these three separate uh, uh, program status registers. So it's called XPSR, it's these three combined. So APSR, what does it do? It contains the ALU flags. Uh, which ALU flags? You got your uh, negative flag, zero, uh, carry, and overflow. You got your four ALU flags. Now, how about the uh, execution PSR? The execution PSR indicates uh, whether it is a thumb or arm instruction. All right, so you know that Cortex processors, uh, they can execute both thumb and arm instructions, but Cortex-M cannot. Uh. Cortex-M can only execute thumb, uh, but Cortex-A and Cortex-R, right, they can execute two different types of instructions. Uh. So this EPSR uh, shows which one you're executing. Now, uh, this is maintained in Cortex-M uh, for uh, consistency, uh, but Cortex-M doesn't do arm, uh, they do thumb. Uh. So this value is always a one, right? So, uh, indicates thumb if it's a one, this bit, and arm if it's zero, okay? While the IPSR, this is the, uh, this is the exception number of uh, current, uh, currently, currently running exception, right? IPSR, it is the, exception number of the currently running uh, exception currently running exception okay so now i just i just want to show you this only so tutorial three uh, you got 20 over questions so they are all uh, theory questions and this type of theory questions right you won't find in your uh, final exam because uh, for example uh, if you just open uh, you just ask mr google so you just ask mr google uh, what is cortex dash m uh, program status register. What is Cortex M PSR? Right, you ask Mr. Google. Uh, what's what's Cortex M PSR? So press enter, and and see which one you say. Cortex M X PSR. Maybe I should type program status register. Program status register. Cortex M program status register. Okay, let's see what does this say. All right, so I got here. Let's zoom in a bit. All right, uh, program status register subdivided into three. APSR, IPSR, EPSR, blah, blah, blah. So you can just copy this whole thing and then paste into your answer script or, and then you get full marks, right? So that's why uh, uh, this type of question so doesn't appear in your final exam. Uh. So your final exam uh, is uh, open book, right? Final exam is open book. You will have questions uh, that are not uh, direct. These are direct questions. Uh. So uh, I've already uploaded I've already uploaded uh, tutorial three answers uh, to Google Classroom, and you can find uh, all these theory questions uh, and answers uh, in Google Classroom. Uh. So what I want to do in our tutorial class is uh, I want to go through some exam type questions and discuss with you. Uh, right? I want to go through and discuss with you uh, some exam type questions. Now, what are uh, exam type questions? Okay, I'm sure everyone uh, you know how where to go to find. I'm sure everyone knows where to go to find the past year questions, right? You just have T A R U C uh, E print. Some some students show me this morning. I also don't know where to get one. So you type T A R U C E print, no? then uh, you go to the Tar U C repository, la, right? 
then you can find uh, you can find whatever paper you want. So for your paper is B tag four two one three, right? B tag four two one three. Yeah. So I search. Okay. Uh, let's look at the latest paper, um, the May exam. Last semester, so I just click on this. Uh, let's let's open it. Okay. Okay. So there we have it. Uh, Btech four two one three. You need to log in. Uh. I think I already logged in already, so I can see it immediately. Uh. Okay. So let's let's look at this question. Let's do let's do a past year question. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's do a past year question first. All right. Let's do a past year question. So, oh, by the way, uh, I just go through this uh, cover page with you. I just, let's, let's have a look at this cover page. Uh. Okay. Um, let's see. So, uh, this is an open book final online assessment. You must answer the questions on your own without assistance from anyone. So, you, you, can, you can refer to anything, textbook, internet, anything, except another person. Uh. And you must submit your answer within the following time frame, which is two and a half hours. Huh? Okay. So after two and a half hours, uh, you will be given uh, 30 minutes. You will have 30 minutes to submit your question paper. If you do not submit within these 30 minutes, uh, then you uh, your marks will minus 10. You'll get minus 10 marks. Right. So let's say 9 to 11.30 is the exam. 11.30 uh, to 12, you have to submit uh, 30 minutes. Right. If you if you submit after twelve or you submit between twelve to twelve thirty or between twelve to twelve thirty or you get minus ten marks. Or. If you submit after twelve thirty, then uh, it is uh, downgraded to zero. Or. Right. Okay. Then uh, below here uh, is the declaration of originality. So uh, you need to write this on your first page of your answer script. Or. Okay. Your answer script. Or. Question one. No. At the top of question one, you just write this. Or. Course code, course title, your signature, your name, your ID, the date. Just write this at the top. Okay. I, I'm sure you have done this many times. I just tell you again. But anyway, uh, this information uh, is also available in uh, Google Classroom. Uh. See in Google Classroom, I've also pasted it here. Okay, this is the uh, final online assessment. All right. Uh, you have four questions. You have four questions. And then, th so now we can talk about the first question already because you see, uh, you already learned CPU, ALP, IRQ, and memory. Uh. So you have 14 weeks uh, and 14 topics. So these 14 topics will be covered entirely by the four questions. Uh. And question one uh, covers CPU, ALP, uh, CPU, interrupts, uh, assembly language programming, and memory. Okay, these 14. So let's look at question one now. Uh. Okay, let's go and look at question one. Right, let's look at question one. Okay, this is question one. So let's push this to the side a little bit. Let's push this to the side. Uh, is it clear, everyone? You can see the question one clearly, or you can see it clearly, yeah. Right, everyone can see it clearly. Yes. Let's see. Ah, okay. So let's let's see. Uh. Right. So let's do question one. Now, uh, you are asked to write an assembly program to generate the sequence of integers 139, 27, 81, 243. Okay. So you got these uh, numbers, uh, 139, 27, 81, 243. So you want to write an assembly program to generate this sequence of numbers uh, iteratively. That means with a loop, you're going to have a loop. And you, the relationship is st is equals to 3 times st minus 1. All right. So that means uh, the next value is the previous value times 3. The next value is the previous value times 3. So 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and so on. The initial value is one, starting with one. Huh? So you need to execute this relation for five iterations, five iterations. Uh, and you store the result of each iteration in R3 using packed binary format. So this is R3. This, this is how it should be stored. Huh? This is the first number, second number, third number, fourth number, fifth number. Okay. All right. 
so how do we do this? How do we do this? Okay, so first of all, we have to be clear on what we want first. Right? Let's, let's be clear on what we want. So this is uh, R3. This is register uh, R3. Okay, this is R3. Uh, first of all, uh, the first number is one. Okay, then the next number is three. So, so three is one one, right? Then the next number is nine. Nine uh, is one zero zero one. Okay, then uh, the next number is twenty seven. So twenty seven is how much? Uh? Now twenty seven now is uh sixteen plus eight plus three, right? Sixteen plus eight is twenty four plus three is twenty seven. Uh. So three is one one. Uh? And then uh, 8 is uh, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 4, 8 is this one. And then uh, 16. Okay, so 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. This is uh, 27. All right, then 81. 81. What's 81? So 81 is uh, 64. 64 plus 16. Uh, that's 80, okay, plus 1. All right, so 60, uh, 6, 1 is that, 16 is uh, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 is here, 32, 64. So 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, dot, dot, dot. That one we don't care. Lah. So uh, uh, I, should, I need to write a program uh, that will put this, this uh, sequence of numbers uh, into uh, R3, right? The sequence of numbers, which is uh, 1, 3, 9, 27, 81. I need to put these numbers into R3. Okay, so how do I do this? And I need to do this uh, uh, using, I need to, I need to use, uh, write a program. Uh, I need to write, right? And it needs to loop five times loop five times so how how should i do this okay let's uh let's draw the flow chart let's draw the flow chart now let's see yeah uh okay let's this is the start of the program start of the program okay uh so i, I need to loop five times uh, so i need to have a loop counter uh, so I want to draw a flow chart. So loop count, the loop count start from zero, right? Then the next one is I need a, I need a multiplier. So my multiplier is three. My multiplier is three because I need to multiply three. So my multiplier is three. And then I need to keep track of the current number. So the number, uh, what's the first number? The number starts with one. No? So my number starts with one. And then I need to store my result. I need to store my result. So initially, my result is zero. Initially, I got no result yet. So my result is zero. OK, uh, I think this is enough already. I initialized everything already. Then um, I need to, the next thing I need to do is uh, I need to count the number, count the number of bits. I call it x. Count the number of bits. I call it x. Right. Just to erase. So maybe I, I should write this in full. Let me write this in full. Count, count the number. Count the number of bits x. Okay. Uh, in the in result. Okay. So. I need to, I want to count uh, how many number, how many bits I have in the result. Okay. Then, then what I need to count uh, so that uh, I shift, I shift the number, shift the number uh, left by X bits. You know why? Because of, uh, you see, uh, initially uh, R3, right? Initially R3, I only got one inside. Then, uh, then uh, after I get the second number, uh, uh, one, uh, right? I, I, I cannot put one, one straight away inside. 
If I put one one straight away inside, then I will lose the you will overwrite the original value, right? So what I do is uh, I need to take one one uh, one one uh, left shift this value. Uh, I need to left shift by one. So it becomes so it becomes one uh, sorry, not left shift, uh right shift, right shift. I need to take one one uh, right shift by one, right? So it becomes one one zero. Then when you put this, you aura all this in. Uh, so I will get one one here, right? One one what because one one zero or with one you will get one one one, right? Then uh, after that, after that, uh, now I get one and one one here, right? So how many bits do I have in the result? I got. I got three bits here. Oh. So the next number is nine. The next number is one zero zero one nine. Eh? So nine, if I count here, I already got three bits. Oh. So nine, I need to left shift by three. So it becomes one zero zero one, left shift by three, so zero 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 here. Then this one, eh, you all, all, all with this, eh, all. Eh? So you're going to get one zero zero one, uh, one one one. Okay, and so on. So this is the reason why uh, uh, I need to count the number of bits inside my results. And then I need to shift the number of bits uh, by uh, X bits, shift, shift left, shift left. Yeah, shift left, not shift right, shift left. I need to shift the number left by X bits and then uh, store it in the result. Store in result. Okay, so all right. Uh, now, what else do I need to do? Okay, let me let me remove this first. Ah, huh? this first. Okay. Uh, what what else do I need to do? Uh, oh, I need to check. I need to check my loop. Ah, huh? so my now I finished doing one number already, right? So I I should take my loop counter huh? plus one. Take my loop count plus one and then after I take my loop count plus one already oh, I should check oh, is my loop count equals to five is my loop count uh, equals to is my loop count equals to five right is it equals to five so uh, if it is not equals to five or oh, then I need to repeat that. So uh, I should repeat at. Uh, I should go back to here to repeat. All right, do the next number. I should do the next number. Okay, but if my loop count is equals to five already, that means I've already done five iterations. Oh, then I stop. Oh, then we stop. Okay, so pretty clear. Uh, that's pretty uh, straightforward, huh? Okay. So, all right. Let's let's write the program. So, I think my my algorithm is correct, right? Really. My algorithm is correct. So now let's write the program. Now, once once you get your algorithm correct, or the program is very simple, and I just write assembly program only, lah. Okay. So, uh, all right. I just look count equals to zero. Oh. I start with R zero, lah. So I just move, I just move zero into R zero. And then uh, multiplier, I use R1. I just move 3 into R1. My multiplier is 3, right? And then my number is 1, so I use uh, R2. Move 1 into R2. And then result is 0. So just move, uh, use R3 for the result. Uh, oh, just nice, oh, because you see, my result is R3. Oh, just nice. Maybe it's a coincidence. Uh, put 0 there, OK? All right, so we are done. Now, uh, how do you count the number of bits in the result? Uh, count number of bits in the result. So we, we just use the instruction no, CLZ. CLZ. Now, you have used this instruction before. CLZ means uh, count leading zeros. Count the number of zeros in front. So let's say uh, let's say I got a number. Uh, uh, OK, let's say I do here. Let's say I got this number. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 
7 and 8. Okay, let's say I got this 32 bit number. Oh. So this, this number oh, is in, this is in R3. Let's say like this in R3. Okay, so if I write like this, uh, CLZ R3 R2, this means oh, count uh, the, the number of leading zeros in R3, count the number of leading zeros in R3. So how many leading zeros do we have? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So until here, oh. so we got, uh, we got 14 leading zeros. Uh. Okay, so you count the number of leading zeros in R3, and then you put in R2. See, put in R2. Uh. So R2, uh, you're going to get 14, 14. You're going to get 14. Okay. So after I get 14, uh, what I do is uh, I take 32 minus 14. Uh, then I will get uh, the, num the number I get is 18. Uh. So uh, I just need to bypass this. Uh, I shift, shift left uh, by 18. Right? To bypass, because when I put the next number in, uh, I don't want to overwrite the original number. So I shift, I shift left uh, by 32 minus the number of zeros. Uh. Okay, I, I take 32 minus number of zeros, right? So this is the idea. This is my idea. So over here, uh, I count I count the number of zeros in uh, R3, right? Then I put them in R4, the next register, I put them in R4. Okay, then what I do is uh, I do a reverse subtract. I take uh, 32, I take 32 minus R4, okay? What, what this means that uh, this is actually, uh, R4 is equals to 32 minus R4, right? R4 is equals to 32 minus R4. So I get I get the number of uh, bits uh, that I have to move, uh, right? So if the number is 1, uh, then I need to move 1 bit. Uh. If I got 1, 1, 1 already, uh, then when I put 9 inside, uh, I have to shift 9 by 3 bits. Uh. So I got the, the, the amount that I, leave, I, I need to left shift already. Uh. So then I shift, I use a logical left shift, LSL. Okay, so I shift the number, shift number, number. So what's my number? My number is uh, R2. So I shift my number R2 by R4. And I put the result back inside R4. Okay, and then I or, I or R4 into R3, okay, because R3 is storing my result. Now. So when I or R4 with uh, R3, uh, so what I'm getting is, uh, I'm getting is R3 is equals to R3 or with R4, uh, this is the operation. Okay, so this, uh, and then, oh, I, I, so I go I one radio. So then look count plus one, no? I just add, uh, what's look count? Look count is R0. So I just add uh, one to R zero. Okay, so is it equals to five? So I compare uh, R zero with five and branch if equal to uh, stop. Branch if equal to stop. So stop would be here. So stop is here where uh, I just, I do nothing like NOP. Right, so if it's not equal, sir, if it's not equals, then I need to continue. I need to look back. Oh. I need to see I look back here. Oh. I need to look back here, right? So I put loop here and then branch to loop like this. Oh. Okay. All right. So I just just to give you an example. Just put this here and put this here. Is this clear? Uh, oh, that's too big. Only two sizes of zoom in. Okay, so, uh, oh, 17 marks, oh, not bad, huh? and get 17 marks like that. 
Okay, but uh, you need to know how to do your assembly programming. Uh. And you, you know what's the great thing? Uh? What's the great thing about getting questions like this? Or uh, is that uh, you can get 17 marks. How? Uh, after you finish your program already, uh, just type it into uh, the debugger, right? And then run your simulator. Just type it into Kill Microvision or type this program. You know, you got your uh, lab tree, right? You got lab tree. Lab tree is uh, the template for assembly language programming. Right? So you just type this code into lab tree oh, and just run it and check your results. Check R3. Does R3 co contain this value? If R3 contain this value, oh, that means your program is correct. Oh? And you're going to get 17 marks. Okay. So you get any programming question now, you can just go and test it using your simulator. Right. So, okay. Uh, do you have any questions here? Any questions? Uh, you can print screen this. Right. Uh, okay. If you're on a print screen, uh, let me enlarge it. This is too big. Uh, let me resize this. Okay. Percentage. Now my, I think resize it will not be clear already. Okay, just put it like this lah. Right? You can just uh print screen this lah. Okay. Let's print screen this. So um the exam questions uh, uh will be like this lah. Uh, uh most of the time your exam question you will have three sections: section A, section B, and section C. So section A uh, is the straightforward question. Uh. So everyone uh, is supposed to be able to answer section A. Okay, all the exam questions are section A, section B, and section C. So everyone should be able to answer uh, section A. Uh. Now, if you answer section A, right, uh, you, sh you should be able to pass. Okay, so as you can see, uh, exam questions, uh, they are not designed to fail students one, right? Exam questions uh, are just designed to test and make sure that you understand the important stuff, right? So part A uh, of each question uh, normally tests your understanding of the main, the main, uh, the main um, theory, the main ideas. Uh, okay. So if you, if you watch your lecture videos, you read your textbook, you got to do your lab practical, you understand everything that you're doing. You should have no problems uh, getting full marks for part A, right? Which means uh, everyone can pass. Now, part B and part C uh, will be slightly more challenging. Okay, this requires uh, thinking outside of the box. Okay, so let's look at let's look at part uh, B and C. Uh. Let's look at part B and C. Okay, so part B. Okay, part B. This is uh, A. Uh, this is A. Okay, so let's look at part B. Part B, uh, do you think the do you think the assembly program, this program that you wrote, uh, can be coded in C? Can can you code this in C? Uh, justify your answer. Okay. Anyone want to volunteer an answer? Anyone want to volunteer an answer? Do you think uh, this can be programmed in C? If yes, why? If no, why? Right. Anyone wants to volunteer an answer? Uh, class, anyone? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no only. Yes or no? Uh, can. No processor address required. Uh, okay. I I think I think your answer is correct, but you is is it should be no, right? Your answer is correct, but it should be no. Uh, do you think the assembly program can be coded in C? The answer is no. You cannot code in C. Why? Le? Why you cannot code in C? Because uh, registers have no address. Okay. Yeah, which is you're right, like, because registers have no address. You see here, you need to put the value into R3. You cannot code this in C because if you code this in C, how do you put the value into R3? You cannot access uh, CPU registers using C programming. You cannot put a value inside R3 uh, using C program. 
Okay, so that's why you cannot code in C because you cannot access CPU registers in C, right? CPU registers that they don't have address, so you cannot access them in C, right? Okay, now let's do the next one, C. So this one, uh, uh, four marks, right? Four marks, all. so if you say no, cannot code in C, you get two marks, all. You say because registers have no address, you get uh, two marks. All. Okay. So the next one is uh, consider the following data structure implementation, X and Y. So here we create a data structure X, got three members, and we create a data structure Y, got three members. X is not packed, Y is packed. So explain the impact uh, on system resource and performance. So we got a uh, system, we got system resource and we got a uh, performance, right? So you got X and Y. You got X and Y, right? So how does X and Y impact system resource and performance? Okay, you can see from here, uh, X uh, is not packed. When it's not packed, uh, means so. Uh, uh, it will place be it will go into memory or uh, at uh, aligned locations aligned locations okay you go into memory at aligned locations uh, right so uh, if it goes into memory at aligned locations uh, x will use x will use uh, use more memory while while how does it impact system resource? Use less memory. How about performance? Now for performance or X or because uh, we have aligned accesses or aligned, uh, so performance will be uh, faster. Why? Because uh, this 32-bit value uh, can be accessed in a single clock cycle. But uh, if you pack it right, if you pack it, uh, the, 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 the 32-bit value may need to be accessed using multiple clock cycles. It might be two or three clock cycles uh, to get this value if it's packed. Uh, right? Because a single unaligned access, uh, it may be unaligned. That means it's placed at an address uh, that is not divisible by four, four bytes. So uh, if it's placed at, a, at an address that is not divisible by four, uh, it may be broken down into uh, two or three separate accesses, separate aligned accesses. Uh. So if that happens, uh, then uh, the access, uh, we say the access uh, will be slower, uh, slower access because you need more clock cycles. Okay, so this will be one mark, one mark, one mark, and one mark. Okay. Right, so uh, you see the exam questions not not difficult, or not difficult, or, but no answer one. Or. You cannot find the answer from books or uh, internet. Or. You have to understand to answer, and if you understand, no, it's it's not difficult to answer the questions. Okay, right. Now I'm going to give you another past year question to do. Okay, as like uh, you every week, I'm going to give you some past year questions to do, or then we discuss the answer. Or. Now. Uh, do anyone have questions on this? Any questions? No question, you can take a print screen and then I, I'll give you your uh, example past year question to try out. All right? So uh, now print screen, now you just you just uh, just press the print screen button on your keyboard. So I just press the print screen button on my keyboard. Uh, then you go to your uh, paintbrush. Uh, you go to paintbrush and then you can just... Uh, Print screen, right? You can just print screen like that. Okay. So everyone knows. I'm sure everyone knows how to uh, print screen now. Huh? So okay. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Everyone done, huh? All right. So now I'm gonna give you a past year question to try out. Uh, I'm gonna give you a past year question to try out. Okay, this is the past year question. So um, now it's already 445. So just take, just take, uh, 
15 minutes to try this out. Right, just take 15 minutes to try this out. Try this exam type question. Try this exam type question in 15 minutes. We will discuss at 5 p.m. Uh, I'll just take around five minutes to discuss. Huh? Okay. All right, everyone, uh, you can try this out. Try this question out. Uh, class, class, just give me uh, one minute, uh, not one minute, just give me 10 seconds. Uh. Uh, Han Xiang, uh, thank you, Han Xiang. Uh, you, you brought up something very, very important. We, we forgot to do this. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Uh, excellent. That means you're, you're really uh, following the class. Excellent. Yes, we forgot to multiply by three. Uh. We forgot to multiply by three. So, uh, no, nobody noticed this. Uh. <laughs> so, now you need to take uh yeah let me get my brush you need to take your number uh, multiply by three right you, you need to take your number multiply by three just now i said this uh, but i forgot to do it you need to take your number multiply by three okay so uh taking the number multiply by three means uh um here uh here uh here let's move this so before we branch uh, before we branch uh, we need to multiply by three so uh, we use mul right multiply uh the value r2 the number so r2 is my number multiply r2 with r1 so what this does is uh uh, R2 is equals to R2 multiply with R1, right? So uh, please add this add this in. Uh. This is multiply here. Okay, multiply uh, R2 with R1. Very good. I, I forgot to put this in. You are correct. Okay, so let me check. Uh, everything seems correct. Yes, yes. Much relieved. So, yep. Okay, everything is fine. Okay, uh, so... Uh, just take 10 seconds, print screen this, right? I add, add some corrections. Uh. I added some corrections. Uh, we need to multiply the number with 3. So R2 multiply with R1. Okay, uh, print screen ready. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so I put this back out. Okay, thanks. Uh. Okay, we can continue with the...
okay, class. So uh, it's five o'clock. All right, class, it's five o'clock. Now, just give me a few minutes uh, to uh, give you the answer. All right, just give me a few minutes to give you the answer. Uh. Now, this question is uh, very straightforward. You can get 18 marks very easily, right? Like I said, uh, right? It's, uh, it's really very easy uh, to get the marks for the part A, right? Okay, now let's see. So over here, uh, question A1, uh, question A1, uh, uh, my brush. Okay, A1, uh, what you want to find out is uh, uh, how are the stack contents affected? So, all right, we have to draw memory. Okay, so this is my memory and this is the address. Okay, so now uh, the stack pointer uh, is initially pointing here. So the stack pointer is initially pointing here. This is the stack pointer. All right, so what's the stack pointer's initial value? You can see from here, uh, the stack pointer's initial value is uh, 0x, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 6, 0, 0. So this address uh, is 0x, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 6, 0, 0. This is the address. Okay. So, and as you know, when you push things into the stack, they will go to the location after that. So the next one, right? The next one. So the location after that, it's four bytes below. So it will be 0, 5, F, C, four bytes below. Now, the first thing that goes into the stack is you remember from your lecture. All right, so you see here, uh, this is what goes into your stack frame. Okay, so the first thing that goes into your stack is the X PSR. Then you have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have your program counter, link register. So all these registers, uh, their values will be saved into the stack so that uh, the, the ISR, the interrupt series routine, can, modif can use these registers. Uh, and after after you finish with the ISR, you can restore back the values, pop these values back out from the stack. So what are the addresses that are affected? Uh? So this would be another five bytes below, which is F, F8. Then you have F4, F0, 5C, 58, 54. And lastly, this one is uh, 5, uh, zero, 0, 5 F eh? oh. this is this this is F right this is F so F C eight F C F eight F four F zero this E sorry E C E eight E four and uh, E zero so this one is E zero okay what are the contents so uh, we have to look at the contents now. Right, the content. So let's see here. The value of XPSR, the value XPSR is 0x, zero 0100, uh, zero zero zero, zero 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 zero. Program counter is uh, 0000, zero 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 one two eight. Link register is 0x. So this question uh, is just making sure that uh, you know uh, which of the registers are affected and should be placed into the stack. Uh. Right. This would be 0, 0, 0, C, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. R2 contains 0, 0, 0, 2. R1 contains 0, 0, 0, 1. And R0 is all zeros. Okay. So we found the stack contents that are affected already. Now, how about LR and SP? So uh, after you, you finish your stacking, uh, the value of LR and SP uh, will be updated. So what's the new value of stack pointer? So you see, this is the old, this is the old value before you stack. Now the new stack pointer value would be here, right? This is the, the SP, uh, the new value. So what's the new value of the stack pointer? 0x, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Oh, I miss one zero here. Zero five E zero zero five E zero. Okay. Zero five E zero. 
All right, so that's the stack pointer value. And then, um, and then the link register value is, what's the link register value? So the link register value is this one. All right, now you can see from here, uh, remember from your lecture that, uh, right? Uh, the link register is loaded with a special exception return code. So the exception return code is, what's the value? 0x, f, 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 and this value. So this value, uh, this value uh, inside got four bits. Uh, what are those four bits? So you can see from here, uh, bit zero and bit one is fixed. This is zero, one. Okay, how about these two bits? So this one would be a one. This is a one because uh, we will return to normal code, track mode. Right. You got two modes. You got track, track mode and handler mode. Handler mode means you're executing interrupt service routine. Track mode means normal code. So just now we were running normal code when we were interrupted. Right? So we will return back to normal code. Right? So return to track mode is one. Okay. And which stack did we use? Main stack or process stack? So you can see the answer is actually here. Right? You see uh, control register is all zeros, right? Take note here. Right? Control register is all zeros. And then here, if you look at this, uh, you know that control register tell you which uh, stack you are using. The control register will tell you which stack you are using, main stack or process stack. So just now our control register is all zero. So we are using the main stack. We are using the main stack. Uh. So if we are using the main stack, then our exception return code, if we are using the main stack, then we should unstack with the main stack. So this should be uh, zero. This should be zero, which means we unstack with the main stack. And 1001 is nine. So the value here is nine, okay? All right, so that's, and that's, uh, that's, 10 marks. So here is 10 marks. Okay. So uh, maybe on the print screen this. Okay. Uh, just take, just take 10 seconds. Print screen this. All right. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Everyone done. All right. Let's look at the next one. Determine the contents of R0 to R12, LR, SP, and PC. When you exit the ISR, okay. So I scroll down now. Huh? Now, if we exit the ISR, what happens to the value in? So this is part two. What happens to the value in uh, R0, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, R8, R9, R10, R11, R12? LR, PC, and SP. What happens to these values? Now, we know for sure that R0, R1, R2, R3, R12, LR, PC, XP, these guys, no change. Why got no change? Le? Because uh, the values have been saved into the stack. So it doesn't matter what the ISR do to them. When you exit the, the ISR, uh, they will be restored back with their original values. So they will have no change. You have the original values, okay? How about R4 to R11? Now, if you look at the cystic handler, you can see here, push R4, R5, R6. And then at the end here, pop R4, R5, R6. That means R4, R5, and R6, their values have been saved into the stack and restored back at the end of the ISR. So also no change. So the only ones that change is R7, R8, R9, R10, R11. And how do they change? Uh, R7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, each of them plus one. You see, you add one to R7, you add one to R8, you add one to R9. So all of them add one. Uh. So what's the original value in R7? Seven. Plus one is, so plus one is uh, eight. The original value in R8 is eight. So plus one is nine. The original value in R9 is nine, plus one is A. 
original value in R10 is A plus 1 is B. And original value in R11 is B plus 1 is C. Okay, so that's, so you identify this, uh, these changes. Uh, so this will be one mark, one mark, one mark, and then you've got five marks here. So that's eight marks. Right, so you can see uh, if, if you understand uh, the interrupt mechanism, uh, right, it's uh, very easy. So 18 marks. Uh. All right, now let me go to the last question. Uh, the last question. Okay, last question. So last question is an open-ended question, uh, part B. Okay, now part B, uh, uh, assume that you are a silicon designer. So you are an integrated circuit designer. Uh. Imagine you are an integrated circuit designer. So you want to choose the processor core. You want to choose uh, which processor, Cortex M0, M1, M2, M3, M4, etc. You want to see which one you want to use uh, for your next uh, microcontroller, silicon product. And you're going to target it for IoT remote sensing. Uh, so your target application uh, is IoT. So what do you need? What do you need? First of all, uh, it's a small sensor running on harvested energy. It's a small sensor running on harvested energy, small sensor. So I need to choose the smallest processor because it needs to be very small. And then uh, it is extremely low power. Why low power? Uh? Because we are using harvested energy. Harvested energy means uh, you get the energy from the environment. For example, you use solar cells together uh, to change ambient light into electricity. Okay, so but the energy uh, that you can harvest like uh, is very, very, very small. So it is extremely low power. And then uh, you need uh, protection for critical security features on internet connection. So you need security, right? You need uh, security. So I got these three requirements. Uh, which is the most suitable Cortex M processor? So you, you select the most suitable one uh, and then you have to give your reason why, uh, justify it. Uh. Okay, so uh, now I show you this in Vitri before. Uh. If you want to find uh, Cortex M processors, uh, uh, you just type Cortex M developer. You just type Cortex dash M uh, developer. Okay. And then you will find uh, these are the current, all the Cortex M processors available in the market. Uh. Right. So you got, you got, uh, let me make it smaller. Okay. These are all the processors available in the market. You got M55, 35P, 33, 23, 73, 4, 3, 1, 0, plus and 0. Okay, so who's the best one? Now, Cortex M0, M0 is the smallest. Okay, that fulfills the first requirement, smallest. But we also need lowest power. So M0 plus uh, is the smallest and the lowest power, most energy efficient. But it doesn't have security. So which one can give us what we want? So I go, go, go a bit. Then I find, oh, okay, this guy. The ARM Cortex M23 is the smallest and lowest power microcontroller with trust zone security. So you got smallest. So the answer is uh, you would choose uh, you would choose Cortex M23. Why? Because it is the smallest, it is the lowest power, and it provides you with trust zone uh, trust zone security okay right so and you get two marks for that okay so and right maybe you want to green screen this All right just take five seconds just press the print screen button on your keyboard and then paste it into a paintbrush lock. so five four three two one okay yeah? Right, push this over here. Okay, uh, class, do you have uh, any questions? Uh, Peng Xuewen, are you here? Peng Xuewen? Peng Xuewen, are you here? Peng Xuewen. Not here, okay. Right, so uh, plus, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? So this, uh, I just showed you two, two examples of, of uh, 
exam type questions uh, that you will see during the exam for question one. Question one is on uh, CPU, ALP, IRQ, and memory. Lah. Okay. So if you uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, that you think of later, you can just email or WhatsApp me. Lah. Right. So we will stop here for today. Uh, thanks for coming for the class. And uh, see you guys next week. Have a nice weekend. Okay, welcome.